Hello world, Geriatric Geek here. How in the heck are you? I hope you're doing great. It's another beautiful day here in North Las Vegas. Gonna be a little warm uh, today. I think we're gonna be probably around 90, but this next coming week, whoo man, blast, blast furnace coming on. About 112, 113 here in the valley. Um, good time to stay in. So anyway, you guys know what, why we're here right now. I have a Hamilton Book Hall, a.k.a. soon-to-be Dollar Tree, right? Most of these, I'm afraid, are, I bought for very inexpensive, but I thought, you know, they're worth one-time watch kind of thing. And then I'll, uh, if they don't make the shelf, then they they go to someone else. So, uh, hey, yeah, let's check it out. Let me Let me show you what I picked up. And at the end of this video, if you stick around, we're going to have a very special giveaway. One for my Disney fans. So, uh, not my Disney fans, but fans of Disney. So, if you're a D fan of Disney and you're a movie person, you're going to enjoy this coming video, and this coming giveaway. Yeah, so hey, thanks for being here. Let's do this. Let's do this right off the top. A little bit of fun. I... Well, I have fun with this anyway. That's right. Sherlock Holmes triple feature, The Hound of the Baskervilles, The Private Life of Sherlock Holmes, and Without a Clue. Uh, the Hound of Baskervilles is not rated. The Private Life is PG-13, and Without a Clue is PG. I have seen The Hound of Baskervilles. I enjoyed that one. I have not seen The Private Life of Sherlock or without a clue, who happens to have a couple of my favorite guys in it, Michael Caine and Ben Kingsley. If you've seen any of those, let me know what you think of them, if you've seen them and liked them. I thought this was pretty cool. I think it was like $3.99 or something, so heck of a deal there. Where am I going to go with these? All right. All right. Next up. If this hasn't made a Dollar Tree yet, um, I'll be amazed. So, This one's soon to be on Dollar Tree, I'm sure. The Dead Hate the Living. The Dead Hate the Living. Not rated 90 minutes, 2,000. Uh, it's a horror comedy. Actually gets, you know, middle-of-the-road reviews. Uh, but what's not to like? It's about zombies in a ho in an abandoned hospital. Yeah, look at that cover. That is cool. When a renegade band of young filmmakers break into an abandoned hospital to make their horror epic, they stumble upon a real dead body and decide to use it in their movie. They accidentally bring it back to life, open a portal to a dead world that releases, releases dozens of other zombies, then struggle for their lives in a desperate attempt to flee from the creatures who apparently have them hopelessly trapped in the hospital by full moon full moon releasing is that what it is full moon features there you go next up she's waiting for you raven banner releasing presents soon to be a dollar tree american conjuring 95 minutes long, 2016. This doesn't get very good reviews, but it takes place in one of my favorite places. Not favorite places, but favorite kind of situations. An abandoned orphanage, in this case. I really love abandoned hospital, abandoned orphanage, abandoned uh, psychiatric care things. I, I enjoy those kind. I don't know why. A buffet of haunting imagery reminiscent of horror classics like Amityville Horror and The Shining. A family move into an abandoned orphanage, and they soon learn that their new home has a disturbing history and that they aren't alone. A malvolent force preys on their sanity with a shocking, violent outcome. There you go. American Conjuring, if you've seen that one. Or any of these, let me know down below what you thought and whether you, uh, you know, whether I should watch it first or last. A James Desert film, Till Death Do Us Part, 
the brides, the brides from, I believe it's 2018, 97 minutes. It doesn't get great reviews, but it's a, about Edgar Allan Poe's life events. It's set in the 50s. It's a Belgian, Belgian film. The Brides is a feature film set in the mid-50s in Western Europe. It's the story about the last months of the writer Edgar Allan Poe, but in the film he's called Edgar Clem. Besides his work in the macabre, the story faces also the mystery about his disappearance a week before his death. interesting to me. Love me some Edgar Allan Poe. Next up, Synapse Films presents Undertaker. Undertaker. Not rated. 2012. 65 minutes. Not really good reviews, but it has zombies. Yay, zombies. I'll find you, then the pain goes away. A deadly virus outbreak is turning the people of Japan into flesh-eating zombies. The government intervenes trying to separate the survivors from the infected. Ryochi, a young boy who has his family and friends destroyed by the undead infestation, becomes an assistant to an undertaker, a person hired by families to kill loved ones who have been turned. Armed with a modified shovel and a bag, Ryuchi roams the ruins of Japan, killing zombies and collecting body parts to prove to grieving families that their infected loved ones are now at peace. All right, a moving story set in a horrific dystopian future with his independent masterpiece, Undertaker. That one sounds like fun to me. Anything with zombies. I love my zombies. All right, Dare to Enter Your Nightmares. It's like a creepy clown kind of thing. Awesome anthology, loved it. To Die For, To Die For, 80 Minutes, 2018. It's an anthology. It's like 20 different directors. To Die For is a horror anthology of short horror films from cult underground indie horror filmmakers. I like, I like indie, I'm, I'm sorry, don't judge me. This fast paced horror compendium of short horror films won't give you time to catch your breath. Your heart will race, you will sweat uncontrollably and you will be shocked to death. An anthology of horror stories helmed by more than 20 directors from the dark depths of horrors underground. What would you do if you only had two minutes to live? Find out in two, die, four. Okay. Little anthology. Looks like fun. Creepy crown, clown. From the creators of Pool Party Massacre, Doll Factory, Bong of the Living Dead, and Alone. It's got to be... Ten thirty one, part two. I do have ten thirty one. Uh, it's a two thousand nineteen horror flick. It's pretty good reviews. Of course, it's a horror Halloween horror anthology. And I love my Halloween stuff, so this will be fun. I'm, I'm sure. It's it is heavy, hilarious, and hauntingly awesome. Says the horror horror syndicate. Creatures of the Night awaken for this year's Halloween Monster Marathon, hosted by Malvolia, the Queen of Screams. Strap in for more freaky flicks with a new batch of indie directors. Spooky tales such as a Halloween celebration turned deadly in a Sam Hine liturgy, and something unholy in the basement desires a nun and Sister Mary. Other worldly strangers need fresh meat and dead lift. Explore the difference between hatchets and tomahawks at the best Halloween party ever in Apache Hatchet Massacre 2. And the serial killer has a big problem in overkill. All right. There you go. 
1031, part two, little horror, Halloween horror anthology kind of thing, it looks like. Now, the other one was, what, To Die For. This one is 60 Seconds to Die, another anthology, I do believe. It's uh, 95 minutes long, 2019 anthology. The cult indie horror anthology returns with a tour de force of indie horror shorts from the underground in 60 Seconds to Die, Part 2. 60 Seconds to Die 2 is a non-stop thrill ride for true fans of horror. This horror anthology sees psycho killers, ghosts, serial killers, demons, ghouls, witches, and a knife-wielding maniac on the rampage as they will stop at nothing to kill. Death is on the menu as we see real-time horror unfold in the seconds that count down before the victims are murdered. By WWMM. Whatever that is. Yeah. Soon to be Dollar Tree. Now, the only reason I got this was because of one thing, and you'll know it's seven killer movies <laughs> called Kung Fu Zombies. Come on. It's going to be crazy, right? Got to be crazy. Probably fun. I'm hoping. <laughs> Not rated from 1981, 80 minutes. It's a comedy horror put out by Mill Creek. It actually gets uh, middle of the road reviews and maybe one of those so bad it's good kind of things. How do you kill something that's already dead? Yeah, stab it in the head. Seven deadly films featuring the greatest martial artists, including Gordon Liu, Si uh, Siu Wong Fan, Billy Chong. Eddie Ko and Panna Ricky Riddy Cry in a battle to the end against their toughest enemy yet, the Living Dead. I'll let you look at the titles there. <laughs> Shaolin vs. Evil Dead, Spirited Killer 2, Shaolin vs. Evil Dead 2, Kung Fu Zombie, We're Going to Eat You. I like it. This is so good. So bad it's good. That's what it's going to do. I'm sure. All right. This is, ooh, this is creepy looking here. By the Devil's Hands, the 666 Killer. Never heard of this one. 90 Minutes, 2009, not rated. Of course, it's horror. Horror. Look at that cover. Gruesome. 25 years ago, the mysterious 666 killer left a trail of corpses. When the killer's thirst for blood has been renewed, only the unsuspecting Jamie Anderson stands in his way. By the Devil's Hands explores the dark, troubled world of the infamous 666 killer and the last hypnotic hours of his victims as he continues his campaign of carnage. Six days, six victims, six ways to die. One of those WWMM things. Seen that one? Let me know what you thought of it. All right. Just moving along here. Chemical Burn Entertainment presents a bone chilling ghost story. Until the dead rest, neither will the living. Tied in blood. 90 minutes, 2011, not rated. It's a ghost story. I like ghost stories. Tied in Blood is an unsettling tale of evil and manipulation, of course, of courage and redemption returning home. A father is horrified to find his wife and children dead, killed, he claims, by an evil spirit that haunts their home. Insisting that a ghostly presence killed them, he asks a gifted spiritualist to find the paranormal killer, but as the dead return to tell their of ghosts, demons, Seduction and murder, uh, Robert discovers a horror more real than any ghost story. He communicates with the deceased to piece together the family's darkest sea. This sounds good. It sounds good. Probably isn't, but we'll give it a go. We shall give it a go. Okay. Must see zombie film. 
Girls gore and gross out gags, funny, imaginative, and very gory. A film by Warren Speed and Steve O'Brien. Zombie Women of Satan. 85 minutes, 2009, R rated. It's an English film with zombies. Okay, I'm going to pick it up. It's very cheap. Can't, I think this is like three bucks. I don't think Dollar Trees will get this one, but we shall see. Next up, this one I think has already been in Dollar Tree. Uh, after I got it home, or got it, I looked at it and I thought, hmm, I've seen that somewhere before. It's called Sweet Dreams. Not rated, 2017, 89 minutes from Wild Eye Releasing. Who was watching While You Sleep? I thought this was in, I had this one, and I looked in my uh, my database, it didn't show up, so picked it up. Buying a house was supposed to be a dream come true, but for Drew and Kara Townsend, the nightmare has just begun, as they are both afflicted with sleep paralysis and nightmares, while something sinister watches them sleep. You seen this one? Let me know down below. All right, you guys, here we go. Four films called Suburban Psycho Horror Collection. Okay. Four films. R rated. This is put out in 2010, it looks like the package was. A twisted thriller with a bloody satisfying conclusion. Suburban Nightmare, all-American loving couple Charles and Deborah Rosenblad are concealing a very dark secret. Hidden in a basement filled with torture devices and human trophies lies their latest in a series of victims, a captive young girl. Psycho Sisters, traumatized siblings Jackie and Jane re-enter society after years of psychiatric rehab only to continue their horrific spree of torture, murder, and mutilation. Okay, then we got something called Skin Crawl and Draniac. I'll let you guys read those. Looks fun. Little four movie action. It's a very inexpensive Hamilton book. gonna fall. When the director of the Boogeyman comes, Baseline Killer. R rated 2008, 90 minutes long. It doesn't get good reviews, but it's about a serial killer in Phoenix, Arizona from 2006. I guess it's actually inspired by this Phoenix killer dude. Inspired by the streak of murders committed along Baseline Avenue in Arizona during 2006 and 2007. Hmm. We'll see. We shall see. Next up, experience the horror in Morgan's head. Pray she won't pick up the phone and end up dead. Close calls. Not rated 128 minutes from 2017. It actually gets middle of the road reviews. Come on. Character-driven giallo homage that should please fans of the genre. Being grounded is nothing new for Morgan. With the house to herself, a fridge full of food, and a box of drugs stashed in her closet, it's party time, as usual for this spoiled teen brat. All she has to do is tend to her sick grandma when her father leaves. But then the phone rings, and as the phone keeps ringing, Morgan's drug-induced paranoia will soon turn into a nerve-shredding nightmare from which she may never escape. Hmm. Okay. I see now and let me know. What did you think? All right. Looks like we got two more. First one is 13 times evil beyond the facade of our everyday reality is the horror. Indeed. 13 times evil. It's about 13 of the most evil people to have walked the earth, as far as I'm concerned. Gacy, Bundy, Ramirez, just to name a few. Utterly gripping and compelling. Beyond the facade of our everyday reality, a reality so seemingly safe and secure in this modern age, but also one in which the news reports senseless
killings and murders too grisly, too heinous and imaginable, unimaginable as to think that such a horrifying event could ever happen to you or your family. Well, it can and has happened to countless unsuspecting everyday people. History is replete with psychotic killers with a horrific and utterly barbarous list of murders and slayings, from the first documented serial killer who massacred over 200 people to the man they called the Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez, who used numerous weapons such as handguns, knives, a machete, a tire iron, and a hammer. The gruesome and depraved list is too long. Explore the darkness that haunts our souls and take some over the precipice. This is the horror, 13 of the most evil people to have walked the earth. Take a ride on the dark side, a must-see. Indeed, reality is worse than these movies, the fictional ones. All right, the last one. <clears throat> I love werewolf movies, so I picked up this four, four movie collection from Wild Eye releasing, I do believe, yes, Werewolf Island, The Snarling, Cold Ground and Wolf House. I have seen Werewolf Island. It was pretty good. I mean, it was all right. One time watch kind of thing. But I have not seen the other three, so what the heck? I picked it up for real cheap. Uh, yeah. So the Snarling is unrated. Cold Ground is unrated. They're all unrated. Uh, Werewolf Island is from 2020. The Snarling, 2018. Cold Ground, 2018. And Wolf House, 2017. Werewolf. I like it. So that's it from Hamilton Book, you guys. Let me know down below what you thought of my little horror, soon-to-be Dollar Tree pickups. Um, one minute. Yeah. So now I've got something special for... We're going to switch, switch channels from the horror channel to the family-friendly friendly channel. You ready? Here we go. I happen to have here in my little hands three movies or three, three, yeah, one series, one movie, or yeah, two. Uh, anyway, you'll see what I mean. Golly. So first up is the seventh, seventieth anniversary edition of Gone with the Wind, brand new, factory sealed. This was hard to get not too long ago, but uh, I have a couple times over, so enjoyed. I, I really enjoy this. If you have not seen Gone with the Wind, you ought to check it out. A towering landmark of a film, indeed. Period romance, war epic, family saga. Yeah, Gone with the Wind. I'm going to give this away. That's right. So you have to be a subscriber to win these things. You have to live in the United States to win these things. There you go. Next up, that's right. It's the complete first season of Roseanne. I used to watch this religiously. I've got all, I've got the whole series, but uh, so I picked this up at Goodwill. It's a, this is put out by Mill Creek. It's a three disc set. Who doesn't love a domestic goddess? Roseanne. I thought it was pretty good back in the day. So this is brand new, factory sealed. Picked it up at uh, Goodwill. Crazy prices. I think it was uh, $1.99. For $2.99, I was awestruck when I saw this sitting on the counter. And I thought, you know what? It's brand new factory sealed. I have to get this for my subscribers. Walt Disney's Treasures. That's right. Brand new factory sealed. The Complete Pluto. Limited series, serialized certificate of authenticity enclosed. Let me know down below if you want this one, guys. We're going to say Pluto. You have to use the word Pluto in the comments below. And next Saturday, I will pick a winner and send this off free of charge to one of my subscribers. So, good luck. Pluto is... This is volume one. Mickey's faithful friend Pluto is unleashed in this first volume of the celebrated canines cartoon capers. Spanning the years 
1930 to 1947. This old geek wasn't even alive then. These 29 classic shorts include Pluto's 1930 debut and The Chain Gang, which was actually his first and second appearance playing unnamed identical bloodhounds, and the 1941 Academy Award winning short, Lind A. Paw. There you go, guys. Get the back if you'd like. If it's something you're interested in, let me know in the comments. Use Pluto. Pluto in the comment. So, hey, good luck to you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it and for subscribing. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that you know when the old geek has dropped another video. I would appreciate it. And share it out. Share these videos out. Share this one especially to the, the Disney fans out there. So, uh, yeah. You know, you can see on the front the, the plastic's not in the greatest of shape, but indeed it is brand new factory sealed. So, hey, good luck to everybody. Again, thank you so much. Hope you're staying safe. Hope you're keeping a positive attitude about you. Hope you're smiling. Keep smiling. Until the next time, until next Saturday for this giveaway. Oh, by the way, real quick, I will have a Dollar Tree haul. I, uh, I have one more Dollar Tree to hit up later on today. After that, probably do the video tomorrow or Monday. But uh, some pretty good stuff I did pick up at Dollar Tree. Not a whole lot. You know, they've got a lot of um, repeat stuff. So, uh, yeah, I picked up a few things for me and a few things for other folks. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. Again, until next time, peace.